Marcus Aurelius was born in Rome on April 26, 121, into a wealthy and distinguished family. His father, Marcus Annius Verus, was a politician who had reached the rank of praetor, and his mother, Domitia Lucilla, was a cultured and pious woman descendant of an ancient consular family. Marcus Aurelius had a younger sister, Ania Cornificia Faustina, with whom he maintained a good relationship throughout his life. From an early age, Marcus Aurelius showed great intelligence and curiosity for knowledge. He learned to read and write in Latin and Greek and became interested in philosophy, history, literature, and rhetoric. His teachers were the most prestigious of the time, such as Herod's Atticus and Marcus Cornelius Frontonus, who praised him for his talent and diligence. Marcus Aurelius also practiced oratory, poetry, and theater and participated in the public debates held in the Forum. His character was modest, serious, and kind. He strove to follow the precepts of Stoic philosophy, which taught him to control his passions, accept his destiny, and do his duty. He dressed avoided luxuries and frivolous amusements, and led an austere and disciplined life. His mother instilled in him respect for the traditional Roman religion, and he complied with the rites and offerings to the gods. His exceptional personality did not go unnoticed by the Emperor Hadrian, who met him when he was six years old and was impressed by his frankness and wisdom. Hadrian decided to adopt Antoninus Pius, a distant relative of Marcus Aurelius, as his successor. He imposed on him the condition that he, in turn, adopt Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus, another young man of noble birth. Marcus Aurelius thus became heir to the imperial throne and received the title of Caesar when he was 17. After that, Marcus Aurelius prepared to assume the empire's government and received a political and military education. He accompanied Antoninus Pius on his travels through the provinces. He became familiar with the different people's laws, customs, and problems. He also married Faustina the Younger, the daughter of Antoninus Pius, with whom he had 14 children, although only seven survived. Marcus Aurelius won the affection and confidence of Antoninus Pius, who appointed him consul twice and associated him with power. During the 23 years of Antoninus Pius' reign, the Roman Empire experienced peace and prosperity. Marcus Aurelius developed into a just, prudent, and benevolent ruler. However, he also faced early difficulties, such as the revolts of the Jews and the Britons, and the threat of the Parthians and the Germans. When Antoninus Pius died in 161, Marcus Aurelius was proclaimed emperor and decided to share power with Lucius Verus, his adopted brother. Thus began a new stage in the history of Rome, marked by wars, epidemics, and crises. Marcus Aurelius would have to prove his ability to defend the empire and maintain harmony while preserving his philosophical ideal and humanist vocation. Marcus Aurelius faced numerous challenges as emperor, both internally and externally. He had to deal with the consequences of the Antonine Plague. This epidemic spread throughout the empire and caused the death of millions of people, including his wife Faustina and several of his children. He also dealt with resource shortages, inflation, corruption, social unrest, and political conspiracies. One of the most serious was that of Avidius Cassius, governor of Syria, who proclaimed himself emperor in 175, taking advantage of a false rumor about the death of Marcus Aurelius. The usurper had the eastern provinces support, but his soldiers killed him before Marcus Aurelius confronted him. Marcus Aurelius pardoned those involved in the rebellion and refused to receive Cassius' head as a trophy. But undoubtedly, the greatest challenge facing Marcus Aurelius was the frontier wars, which forced him to spend most of his reign in military camps. With his adopted brother and co-emperor Lucius Verus, he had to face the invasion of the Parthians, who had taken advantage of the death of Antoninus Pius to attack the Roman provinces of Armenia and Syria. Marcus Aurelius sent Lucius Verus to the Eastern Front, while he remained in Rome to attend to internal affairs. Lucius Verus succeeded in defeating the Parthians and regaining control of the provinces. Still, his conduct was less than exemplary, as he devoted himself to pleasure and luxury, leaving effective command to his generals. Lucius Verus died in 169 as a victim of plague or poisoning, 
and Marcus Aurelius was left as the sole emperor. Marcus Aurelius faced a new threat shortly after, the Germanic peoples living north of the Danube. These peoples, pressured by the migrations of other barbarian groups, launched a series of raids against the Roman territory, endangering the stability of the provinces of Germania, Pannonia, Dacia, and Messiah. Marcus Aurelius personally moved to the northern front, where he led a long and arduous campaign against the Marcomanni, the Quades, the Sarmatians, and other peoples. Despite the difficulties, Marcus Aurelius managed to contain the invaders' advance and inflicted several decisive defeats. He also negotiated peace with some of them. He granted them lands and privileges in exchange for their loyalty and collaboration. However, the war was never over, and Marcus Aurelius had to return to the front several times until his death. Amid so many tribulations, Marcus Aurelius found solace in philosophy, to which he had devoted himself since his youth. He was a faithful follower of Stoicism, a school that advocated reason, virtue, self-discipline, and acceptance of fate. Marcus Aurelius wrote his philosophical reflections in a work entitled Meditations, which consists of 12 books written in Greek. In them, Marcus Aurelius addresses himself, expounds his moral principles, his advice for governing, his criticisms of vanity and ambition, his thanks to his teachers and benefactors, and his thoughts on life and death. The work is a testimony to the wisdom, humility, and humanity of Marcus Aurelius, who considered himself a servant of the common good and who sought harmony with nature and the gods. Marcus Aurelius died in 180 in Vindabona today's Vienna or Sirmium today's Sremska Mitravica while preparing for a new campaign against the Germans. His body was transferred to Rome, and he was buried in Hadrian's mausoleum, together with the remains of his wife and children. The Senate exalted him, and great homage was paid to him. His son Commodus succeeded him on the throne, but his reign was ill-fated and marked the beginning of the empire's decline. Marcus Aurelius was the last of the so-called five good emperors and the last representative of the golden age of Rome. His figure has been admired and revered throughout history as an example of a just ruler, wise philosopher, and virtuous man. Marcus Aurelius left a profound mark on the history of the Roman Empire and Western culture. His reign was the last of the so-called Pax Romana, two centuries after the empire reached its maximum extension and prosperity. Under his rule, order, justice, tolerance, and the welfare of the citizens were maintained despite difficulties and external threats. Marcus Aurelius was an emperor concerned with the general interest. He tried to rule with wisdom and equity, following the principles of Stoic philosophy. His philosophical work, Meditations, is one of antiquity's most essential and original works. In it, Marcus Aurelius reflects on his life, duties as emperor, moral values, relationship with the gods and men, and vision of the world and destiny. His style is simple, direct, and personal, revealing great sincerity and deep humanity. His thoughts are a source of inspiration and consolation for all those who seek virtue, happiness, and the meaning of life. His figure has been admired and respected by generations of historians, philosophers, writers, and artists who have considered him a model of a just ruler, wise philosopher, and virtuous man. His image has been depicted in numerous works of art, such as sculptures, paintings, coins, and medals. His biography has been narrated by ancient authors, such as Dion Cassius, Herodian, and the Historia Augusta, and modern authors, such as Edward Gibbon, Marguerite Yorsenar, and Anthony Burley. His influence has extended to various fields of culture, politics, religion, and thought. Marcus Aurelius was the last of the five good emperors and the previous representative of Rome's golden age.